Surrounding your enemy is an important maneuver to master. It's one that allows you to destroy enemy forces with a high degree of efficiency and with a minimum loss of your hit points. Learning how to perform the surround maneuver will automatically give you an understanding of how best to avoid being surrounded yourself. But you'll also be training for how to escape a surround. The point of the maneuver is to bring local superiority over enemy forces with firepower and position. In World of Tanks, surrounding and overwhelming your enemy is one of the most effective strategies for winning matches. Even the most entrenched enemy can be surrounded. It's simply a matter of timing. What you're looking for is any opportunity to engage enemy vehicles from multiple sides with two or more groups of allied tanks. The enemy is forced to choose which side to return fire upon, leaving the other allied force unchecked to swing to the flank or rear. As usual, coordination is key. You will need more tanks in the area than the enemy to perform a true surround. You could just charge in and overwhelm them head-on in cases like this, but you're better off performing a surround to minimize damage to your tanks. Typically, an advantage is gained by moving the majority of your forces up one flank as a group, leaving a small detachment to bring up the rear of that group and protect the flanks. Use your scouts to gather information about the movement of the enemy and adjust your positions accordingly. Your artillery should always be in a position to cover the rest of your forces. The goal is not to surround the entire enemy force, but to move the attacking force from one isolated group of enemy forces to another, splitting off small detachments to do the flanking while one or more tanks remain to engage from the front, moving in a clean sweep of the map. Step 1. To begin with, we'll walk you through a two-phase exercise. We want to teach you and your team to work in small groups, two or three tanks, in other words, a platoon. You'll be able to practice these maneuvers in the random battle, so you can get used to interacting with one another. You should divide your tank company into platoons of three tanks. They should be placed all over a map and they shouldn't interfere with each other. You should assign roles to each platoon. There should be one defending tank and two assault tanks. A defender should take cover, and assault tank should take another one at some distance away. The first assault tank should clinch enemy vehicles, whilst the second one is trying to get to the enemy's rear and penetrating its sides or rear armor. Obviously, a tank that stayed in defense should live as long as possible by performing maneuvers and using time between enemy shots to avoid the next shell by showing to the enemy the most armored spots. A good way to tell if the surround maneuver was effective is to check the HP of the tanks after the engagement. If each tank has roughly two-thirds of their health remaining, it was performed admirably. A piece of advice, after you get to an enemy rear or flank, you definitely should try to use your position and try to burn it up or destroy its ammo racks. In the first case, you will be able to kill the enemy in a shorter period of time, and with the saved seconds, you may be able to help other members of your tank company. And in the second case, you don't let an enemy use its full fire potential on you, or if you are lucky enough, you will blow it up with a couple of shells. In the second part of this exercise, you'll be splitting the groups into matchups of three versus two. The task remains the same. Players should perform a counterattack. Tanks of the bigger group should surround counterattacking teams in a special way, and don't let a couple of enemies surround any of the three battle vehicles. If you want to make it, two tanks should clinch counter-attacking enemies, whilst the rest of the team is flanking them and getting to their rears. At the same time, a couple of tanks should try to flank one of the three tanks and destroy it from the sides as fast as possible, and try to perform such maneuvers again with the next tank. The basic rule for training players is the following. You should focus fire on a single target until it is destroyed just like you've done at focus fire training. Once you've drilled the scenario numerous times, have your team enter the random queue to further hone their skills and make up some of those repair costs. Step 2. The most common form of a surround is a bracket. The enemy is engaged from the front, and the assault comes from one side or the other. It serves to further pin the enemy and makes for quick work of their health bars. In the first exercise, you'll split your forces into two groups, one slightly larger than the other. One should have a little bit of an advantage by placing a couple of extra medium tanks into the mix. The smaller group will attempt to defend a position. The larger attacking force should then be split into two groups, one containing the durable pinning tanks 
and the other consisting of the faster medium assaulting tanks. This exercise will require a great deal of cooperation, so you may end up running it many times before you see results. The heavy tanks will lead the advance, engage with the enemy, pinning them, while the medium tanks move to flank and surround. The destruction of the defending tank should follow shortly thereafter. The task of the second team is to extract themselves from the surround. The proper counter to a surround maneuver is to destroy the weakest tanks while attempting to disengage. They'll need to carefully focus fire and continually be seeking cover as they retreat. The second part of this exercise should be held on a map like mines or a city map. The smaller team should be placed in an area that is covered from artillery fire. Their task will again be to extract themselves from the incoming surround of the superior team once they are engaged. To do so, they will have to identify the weakest tanks attacking, pick them off, and remove themselves from the continued onslaught. All the while, the opposition's artillery will bombard them, even repositioning to fire upon their once safe position. It's a cruel scenario for the defenders, but it will serve to teach the strengths and weaknesses of the surround maneuver. It's a challenge, no doubt, for the defenders, and they'll have to react fast, but starting at full health will give them a few moments to decide what to do. In a situation where they were starting at 50% health or less, a surround is nearly impossible to escape. Your tanker should pay special attention to three factors. One, synchronization of movement. A team that is divided into two groups should attack defenders at the same time. And when they are getting out of cover, they mustn't start dying in the small groups one by one. Two, players should get out of cover correctly and don't let enemies destroy the first tanks by focusing fire on them. We've already explained to you how you can get out of cover without letting enemies focus their fire on your tanks in the previous episode of Tank Academy. Number three, at the same time, you should focus your fire at the weakest tanks. For example, those tanks that show rears to you. You should try to burn them or destroy ammo racks. We've already explained how to do it in the first episode of Tank Academy. This concludes our fourth lesson in Tank Academy. Our work here is finished, but your job of training your tankers in the use of a surround maneuver has just begun. Only regular and intense training will drill the information and ability into your troops. We wish you luck on the battlefield and hope that you'll join us for the next Tank Academy lesson, Scouting. Roll out! <laughs>